ahead and call our May 19th, 2022 Joint School Services Committee meeting to order. Um, thanks for everybody for taking time out of your day to be here with us today. Um, not to put him on the spot, but we do have a new participant. We have somebody trying, Dennis Witt is trying to zoom in. Oh, I, I just texted him and told him we didn't have a, a okay. zoom. Do you want me to call him? If you want to dial him up and, and put him on, that's fine. Okay, he's just texting right now. I'm sorry, Reed. He just he just destroyed your introduction. We'll do that it's in just okay. a second. <laughs> yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Witt. Hey. We have you on speakerphone. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, good to have you with us, Mr. Witt. I was uh, just had started. Um, and was uh, thanking everybody for being here. And I will take the time to, to welcome Mr. Reed Walters with his first meeting here with us today. So thank you. Appreciate you being here with us. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, per the agenda, we'll um, start taking care of some of the housekeeping first and foremost. We do have the meeting minutes from our February 23rd meeting. Um, in the email that you were sent, it did include January minutes in that packet as well, but those were just for review. We did have some amendments to uh, those minutes, so we reflected those changes. But February 23rd minutes that you see here are up for uh, approval or amendment today. So if I could have everyone take a few moments to review those, and I'll entertain a motion to approve or amend. Motion to approve. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Carton and a second by Mr. Tucker. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. That would then bring us to the invoices. You have contained in the packet two invoices, one from uh, Mrs. Phyllis Flowers, who's been assisting on the financial side with um, our finance folks from both divisions, and then there is a invoice submitted by our clerk, Ms. Armantrout. So we can uh, take those all together, I suppose, if that's the, okay with the rest of the committee. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to pay all the bills. <coughs> I okay. have a motion by Mr. Garton and a second by Mr. Tucker. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you all very much. Um, Brings us to, moving on rather quickly, um, but brings us to uh, some of the meat of the agenda here. Um, Ms. Oneidas could not be with us here today, but we'll, uh, between uh, myself and Ms. Halterman and anyone else um, that uh, can chime in, we'll try to go over some of the recent happenings uh, as it relates to the Casey Field improvements. And of course, as you all know, uh, the Allegheny Foundation funded a, a grant uh, that was used uh, to go through and, and explore uh, some of the renovations that we could do to Casey Field, uh, principally to the existing locker room and uh, uh, locker room facilities was the main priority there. Um, a, a higher level overview of that is basically, um, there has to be a, a bit of value engineering done. Uh, I think if you all remember, it should have been our January meeting perhaps at correct. City Hall where Ms. Oneidas gave us an update, and at that point we had had some, uh, some interim numbers, if you will, and she, she warned all of us that there may be a bit of sticker shock there, which I don't think surprises any of us with uh, current economic um, conditions. So the Casey Field improvement um, situation is basically at a value engineering stage, really trying to focus down on uh, what's really needed for uh, the student athletes that will be playing at Casey Field to to have the most the, the, the best and most adequate facilities that we can muster uh, in that time period. So, no um, no official new drawings or plans necessarily that I've I've seen. So, I think everything is moving forward there. Um, but again, there there will be a little bit of a back and forth as far as dialing in exactly what we have to have there and and what that will cost and. Um, I'm sure the community at large will be kept in the loop on that because there will be a lot of people paying attention to that as they ride back Craig Avenue and, and that. So did I miss anything there, Ken? I, I think that's very complete. Um, the, I was really pleased hearing from the firm there were some options that I don't think we'd previously explored. So it's right. 
lovely to have that information. Yeah, and as part of the value engineering, that's, that's basically having additional options is another way to say value engineering. So, uh, but we, from what I have seen, I, I think we can, um, can be confident the progress is being made there. So I think um, we're, we're still on track to, uh, to be able to get those improvements made before the combining of the high schools and, and the official combining of the student body. So um, hopefully we've covered that as, as completely uh, as we could. Is there any questions, uh, conversation about the, the Casey Field improvements before we move on? Okay. Um, that will then bring us to uh, another item uh, of, of note, the facilities use agreement, and if you all remember, I believe it was at our February meeting, um, there was some conversation about a, basically a three-way facilities use agreement, but we, we dropped that in favor of separate agreements from the county with the school division and the city with the school division. Um, that is still all uh, going as planned, I think, as, as it was discussed back then. Mm -hmm. um, She's got hours. Yeah, and from the, the city side of things, as far as the use of Casey Field and Jackson River Sports Complex as necessary, I feel like we're still in the same place with that. Uh, I haven't seen a draft uh, of that contract or any anything like that, but um, overall, the spirit of the facilities use agreement was just to allow the joint uh, school division some some access to some of these city and county owned facilities as necessary for the benefit of our student athletes so uh, we're, we're still in the same position there but we we felt like it was useful to have an update today um, just to let everyone know that that, that is still still happening um, I feel like we we kind of hit the pause button on that a little bit because we had some other priorities plus our meeting schedule got a little bit more sporadic because uh, well, we just had some things going on, obviously. That was right in the middle of school and uh, locality budget season and lots of things going on. So, um, But still uh, still some, some very broad consensus on that. So, uh, Anything I missed there? I, I, don't, I don't believe so. It's been, um, you know, I know the various attorneys from various groups have been working on that to make sure things work out well. And of course, um, Reed will be catching up on that on, on the county side as he settles in. We're so glad to have you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. But don't we're, we're not assigning homework today. <laughs> um, but, but but I'm sure you already knew you had some. So, um, any other questions from the facilities use side of things? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, moving on then. Uh, this is a topic I know. Several of us have had this conversation, um, you know, even months back um, as to how best to transition the Joint School Services Committee, uh, maybe a bit of a handoff to the new consolidated school board um, once, once official. So I just kind of wanted to put this, uh, Ms. Halterman and Ms. Snead Johnson and Mr. Wright and I had, had talked and gone over agenda items and we thought that it would be a good place for us to have this discussion today uh, as to, to what we expect this committee to be uh, going forward, if anything. So I will just kind of prime it with that and open it up to the rest of, of you all. Yes, sir. I think your best way to hand it off is to actually keep it in existence, but make it more of an oversight and have your chair, vice chair, mayor, and vice mayor in it so that you've already got your budget grouped together right. and anyone else would just be by invite yep. when needed. And that and your new school board. Exactly. Yeah, no, I'm just... So it'd be a total six. Yeah, and, and I, um, uh, Mr. Griffith and I, I think you talked about that uh, a bit, and I think it, it's, a, it's a pretty good idea. The leadership uh, clause there in the funding agreement did call for such a group to... To, to be formed and to meet, uh, had some prescriptions there as to, to when to meet every budget year. So um, I think it's a perfectly fine idea. Thoughts, anyone else? Yeah, I think acting as a, like Matt said, a oversight or even an advisory committee. Right. So. right. Mm -hmm. and, and just label it with the vice mayor, mayor, chair, vice chair. Don't have to put names to it. And that way it can, it can run forever. Stays perpetual with your school board and your agreement. Okay. 
Um, Mr. The proposed school division uh, policy manuals, as I think everybody's probably remembering, also allows for the right, continuation right. of a committee. So that's that's useful. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, well, we've had one good idea. Do we have <laughs> do we have any more or any further comment on on that idea? Just to transition to the new divisions. Uh, well, the new leadership group uh, that was prescribed per the funding agreement. So I think that the way that that would kind of happen was would be to, um, you know, we would have a motion that this committee, as, as it is, runs until June 30th, and then that committee after July 1st would be kind of the comprised of those other individuals. Yeah, that would be the makeup of the Joint School Services Committee. Okay. And that may dovetail into, I guess, a second part of this conversation. I mean, if, if this body, as it's currently comprised, um, obviously will will not exist if we're transitioning this this committee into something the new division will need. Um, does this committee, as it currently sits, need a closeout meeting of any formality or just a handoff? Okay. Yeah. So it's going to keep going. I mean, I, I think that this committee should stay in place until June 30th in case there's exactly. any reason. Right. But then after July 1st, we just Correct. we all problem. agree that the the makeup of the Joint School Services Committee is yeah, you basically have a sunset. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if you volunteered yourself to make that motion. Uh, <laughs> no, I, sure, I'll make a motion that that. Um, <laughs> the Joint School <coughs> Services Committee stays in um, place as is until June 30th, and at that point um, it will be the vice, the chair and vice chair men of the uh, school board and chair and vice chair of the Board of Supervisors and the mayor and vice mayor of city council. Okay. And invitees as needed or... Well, and, and, and executives. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Wright and then a second by Mr. Tucker. Um, I think we can voice vote this. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, well, I, I think that is a, a, a good idea and, a, and a, I think a useful off ramp um, for this committee. So um, appreciate the thoughts on that. Good discussion. Um, that would then, well, let me back up. Are there any other, any other questions or concerns about the transition of this body? Okay. Well, um, that would then bring us to our uh, member and superintendent comments portion. <coughs> so I'd be happy to maybe go around the table. I'm going to pick on Gerald since he's been quiet down in, in the back in the corner there. Mr. Franson. Uh, Anything you have for us today? Just, just the fact that uh, I appreciate the effort of this committee. I, uh, I think we made history when we got the two groups together. And, and the key, the key to this whole thing is, is for us never to forget we're in this for the kids, and that it's no longer you and them; it's us. We're all in this together, okay? and that's how we need to handle it. Today. You know, I know they had some issues about, you know, Cook and Forge having representatives on the board, you know, in that area, but it, it doesn't matter because we're going to represent Cook and Forge the same as we represent Allegheny and Covington. It's, it's, it's us, not, not them. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we can kind of go around, Tom. Uh, anything? Uh, Just, I'll echo what Gerald said. Yeah. No yeah. disagreement with anything he says. Absolutely. Not, not much needed there. Um, Mr. Garten? I'd like to welcome all new joint school board members. Um, it is a pleasure to hand off to that group. Um, they've got a, I hope they have a lot of energy because it's going to be very busy for them and um, got an excellent group of people and I know they'll do a great job. But it's, it's been a pleasure to get it to this point and pass the baton. Right. Yeah, I agree. Mr. Griffith? I echo what everybody else has said. There ain't nothing else to put to it. Uh, Mr. Baker. Uh, I think with the uh, new members that Board of Supervisors and City Council chose, 
you have enough knowledge base there, uh, and a majority of those individuals have been around long enough during this process to know, um, you know, what they're facing, have enough information about some of the history. So I think they're going to do very well as a group together. Mr. Tucker, no, anything to add? What everybody else has said, I'm fine. Okay, it's good. All right. Mr. Wright. I'm, I'm right on board with everybody else. You know, like Gerald said, we got to put the kids first and know that we're all together in Clifton Forge, Potts Creek. It's all the same thing. We're, they're all people, kids from the Allegheny Highlands. So. Well, um, Ms. Halterman, let me let me let you uh, and, and Ms. Snead Johnson, if, if she can still hear us uh, well. Um, she, she is there, so we're going to try to tag team our report. We would just echo the voice of thanks. We're so grateful to both boards, to all the people in the community who came out to participate on the boards, to the incoming board, to our municipalities. There's just a lot that's been very, very good work. And I often say we've been talking about this my entire lifetime, which is, <laughs> which is not an exaggeration. So I really appreciate all the hard work on behalf of our kids and our community. Um, we're excited because the end of the school year brings some normalcy this year. There's some really neat celebrations going on in the schools, and I, I appreciate you all appreciating those as well. And uh, so that we can have a celebratory moment today, because it is kind of a milestone of a meeting, uh, the Allegheny Foundation has assisted uh, Melinda and I in having some treats for you all. So there's, there's some treats for yeah, before you leave. We have cake. <laughs> oh, am I missing anything, Ms. Steve Johnson? Uh, no. Can you hear me? We can. I uh, know. I'd like to echo what everyone has said around the table. It's an honor and a privilege to work with such a fine group of individuals and um, wish uh, the new board much success. And there has been a lot of wonderful people working hard to make the Allegheny Highland School Division a success on July 1. So uh, thanks to each of you, and I hope. Uh, your little celebration will be successful this afternoon. I'd like to thank the foundation for doing that. Yep. Okay. Well, um, I'll, I'll just echo exactly what... Yes, yeah, sir, Mr. Witt, I'm sorry. I almost forgot about you over there. I apologize. Yeah, you, you, you know I have to say something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, it's, it's, uh, first of all, I wanted to just commend all of you for the great job you've done coming together. Uh, this is uh, a historic moment for Halifax, for uh, Allegheny Highlands Public Schools, and it's a, it's an exciting opportunity going forward. Uh, just I uh, just think y'all are doing a great job. The, the action you took today was it just so appropriate and, and just signifies the, uh, the the unity that you have there. So good, good, and keep going. So, all right. Thank you, Mr. Witt. Thank you. Um, well, everybody else has said all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, Mr. Spangler, we have left you out. I'm going to put you right on the spot. Any, anything else to add? I apologize. No, no. I'm fine. I'm a visitor. <laughs> a participant, an, an invited participant for sure. But He's been working with the joint system for a long yeah. time. Yeah, he's, he's been living all of this right. for how many years at, at RTC? Well, since 2005. Yeah, so. So it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Maybe maybe you showed us the way. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> okay. Yeah, a lot of people have been putting a lot of work in. Yep. So. Well, as as Gerald started us off, uh, and everybody else said, I mean, it, there is a lot to be hopeful for, and that's I guess the only thing I would add. Um, despite the knowledge that there will be issues that come up, we're we're, we're prepared for that fact. But I I remain optimistic. Uh, this has not been easy, um, and I think all of us that have participated in this know that, but I'd just like to thank all of you all, uh, everybody that's been here from the beginning, and then uh, Mr. Baker's addition, um, uh, just really after the consolidation agreement, Ms. Halterman uh, coming, uh, jumping in the deep end of the pool, uh, and, and doing it with a smile, I appreciate, and uh, uh, just just appreciate everybody's efforts throughout all of this. It's It's been good. Um, even though, um, I don't know, would we go back through and do it all again? <laughs> For the outcome, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's all I think I have. Um, does anyone have anything else? 
If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Thank Second. you all for coming, and we'll have some cake here. Let's let's eat some before we take off.